Hello, welcome. Coulter Nuanas from Skyline Sports here. Appreciate you joining in with us again. Like I said, we won't have many of these from the office slash bedroom, so do not worry. Uh, we'll have most of our stuff shot out on the football field or in other controlled situations, just trying to get this thing rolling with spring ball underway and uh, everything I wanted to do from earlier. Uh, memory card ran out of space when I was out on the football field, so you'll notice from our first video from spring ball at Montana State Football, uh, we were definitely... It was spliced up. I had seven minutes of analysis on the field, seven minutes from this here spot right here too. But I promise we will not be talking your head off for seven minutes again. You won't have to look at this ugly mug up close for very long. Just wanted to give you a little intro here. This is going to be a video from the first day of spring drills featuring Chris Murray, the reigning freshman of the year in the Big Sky Conference, Brian Armstrong, the new offensive coordinator at Montana State, and Daenerys McGee, the new quarterback coach at Montana State. Chris Murray lit the league up last year running the ball, one of the leading rushers in the conference, scored 12 touchdowns, had an epic 142-yard performance in Montana State's 24-17 win over the Montana Grizzlies in Missoula. As has been the policy at Montana State since I've been here since 2010, no true freshman allowed for interviews. So despite Murray's situation as the starting quarterback for the Montana State Bobcats, as well as the top freshman in the conference, was not allowed to do interviews. So this is his media debut here following Wednesday's practice, the first time he spoke with reporters. Very impressed with his poise, very impressed with how well-spoken he was for a kid who has not done a lot of this stuff. Uh, so that was pretty fun. Uh, we also hear from Brian Armstrong, who was the offensive line coach a year ago. He is now the new offensive coordinator. So you'll hear from him about his ideas on uh, how to accentuate Murray's skills as well as some of the tweaks he will make as he takes over for Courtney Messingham. Messingham jumped ship to North Dakota State in the offseason season. And uh, Armstrong, he has a lot of experience calling plays. He was a high school head coach in Florida, coached a couple of prestigious high schools there uh, in the uh, Lakeland region, uh, coached some pretty darn good players there. He's also the head coach at Rocky Mountain after being the offensive coordinator at Rocky Mountain in Billings, and he had some record-setting offenses in the Frontier Conference. So he's a guy that has a lot of experience transitioning from the offensive line to being the primary play caller. Should not be a problem for him. And I know he's really excited to work with Chris Murray, as is Daenerys McGee. You will remember Daenerys McGee as a four-time All-Big Sky selection, as well as the two-time Big Sky Offensive Player of the Year during his time with Montana State. Led MSU to three straight conference titles. His redshirt freshman through redshirt junior year, an injury-plagued senior season in 2013, ended in a disappointment as the Bobcats missed the playoffs. Uh, McGee then embarked on his coaching career. He had a brief stint in the CFL with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders before then landing at Florida International with former Montana State Offensive Coordinator Brian Wright. Uh, he was a grad assistant there at FIU in Boca Raton, Florida for a year before then joining Dave Dorn's staff at North Carolina State. You'll remember Dave Dorn is a Drake alumni. He played for Rob Ash, former Montana State head coach, who was Denarius's head coach in college. Dorn played for Ash at Drake and he has then risen up to be the head coach of North Carolina State. Denarius finished up his master's degree there at NC State and uh, then got his first full-time job coaching at his alma mater, working with quarterbacks. I know he's very excited to be working with Chris Murray as well. So uh, without further ado, here is those three interviews from Wednesday, March 22nd. And check back with us. We'll have all sorts of stuff for you guys. SkylineSportsMT.com. That's your go-to headquarters for all things Bobcat football, all things Big Sky Conference Athletics. Every day, every season, SkylineSportsMT.com. Thanks so much for checking us out. Yep. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you, Chris, finally. Nice to meet you, finally. Um, how, how's it feel to be back out here? I mean, it feels great, you know. Definitely got some practice over spring break and before this, but to actually have a full practice with the team and everyone and the ball is actually pretty fun. It's pretty great. Can you just compare how, how this feels uh, compared to August when you first stepped out on the field? Uh, uh, well, how, how are things a little different for you? Well, um, it feels great to actually have a full year with the whole team, so you know, we could develop our chemistry better. And I thought that's really, I think that's really important coming into this next season. What was last year like for you, uh, kind of being thrown in to action and then having to navigate and lead a team as a true freshman? Um, at times it was frustrating, you know, because you got like older people, 22, 23, looking at you, like what to do and all that. But obviously you adjust over time, man, you know, you just get used to it. Do you feel more comfortable now? At yeah, definitely, you know. I mean, I love my, I love my team. They, they, make, they make me feel like family. Yeah, what were the expectations when you went into camp in August, and then how did that compare to how the season unfolded? Um, well, coming in last year, my, my goal when I first got here was to be the, was to be the backup, or you know, if I was even close to, to compete. And lucky enough, I had the opportunity to compete, so that was great. But uh, this, obviously, this this um, spring ball is way different, so 
my job to lead this team. How great of an experience was that for you? I know there were ups and downs, but how invaluable is it to get on the field as a freshman, as an 18-year-old kid? I mean, obviously everything didn't, didn't go perfect, but you're not going to get to be close to perfect if you don't go through the ups and downs. You know? So I where, that was great. So just, uh, where do you think your major improvement in getting better in the passing game lies? Um, just my feet work, honestly. Last year I did a lot of chattering, you know, because you know, obviously I'm you know, a decent runner, so whenever I chatter, it makes me want to run. So if I just slow my feet down, I'll be, more, I'll be able to control it. Did you feel yourself getting more comfortable um, as the season wore on? Did you think um, that kind of proved itself out those last few years? I did a little bit, but definitely this off season, I, I grew more as understanding defense way, way better, and then I think that really helped me. How about having uh, Coach McGee in the fold? How's that kind of oh, yeah. changed things in the last couple of months? Um, it's been different, but um, he, he knows what this town is about and how to get get to where we want to be. So I think we just follow his lead, which should be great. How has he kind of helped you in, in the uh, the room teaching teaching us? Um, he, he definitely has a different style of, of teaching the concepts and everything, which I think me it helps me better personally, and I think that really helps well. I think. It, well, well, today has identifying coverages and things like that. The way the last year ended, having you guys win two straight, including the great performance you had in Missoula, what's the what was the off season like for you? You probably got a ton of good feedback from around the um, community. I did, but I, but honest, honestly, I did not let, let that get to my head. My my job is to come to the get us in the playoffs, and that's my goal. I have nothing individually, just team. That being said, those two wins kind of give you some confidence. Yeah, they, they, they did momentum. definitely. You know. Obviously, throughout the season, myself, I, um, I had um, obviously some turnover issues, and those last two games, I, as offense, we did not turn over, we did not turn over the ball, and the outcome was victory. So I believe if we cannot turn over the ball, we have the chance to win each game. Can you, can you describe the, the game against Montana and just how it all played out and being able to, to win it the way you did, and, and how that's going to be sort of a springboard into? I mean, that was like obviously the best game. I've ever been a part of, you know, just the atmosphere. It was, it was crazy. I could even, even hear, hear myself talk at times, but um, it was just a great experience. That obviously boosted our confidence going into this offseason. And I mean, even though we still have that confidence, we still have that chip on our shoulder as a team. So, yeah. You lose a relatively it. quick change from uh, Coach Mess to Coach Armstrong. Will you talk about what that change has been like so far and uh, how you've adjusted? Um, they obviously had different coaching styles. You know, obviously Coach Mess is a little bit older, so. He has a little, little bit more knowledge, but I think Coach McGee relates to us more because you know he played here and he knows what the, you know, how to get us back to to the winning shape we want to be. What do you need to accomplish this spring, personally? Um, just obviously get better as a passer. That's, that's it. And, that's key. and I did guess just Coach Armstrong running the offense now, and uh, maybe I guess Coach Joe talked about just cutting down the verbiage. I know that probably makes your job easier. Is as the guy in the huddle, but how does that make the whole offense go? And it just makes it way smoother, like the signaling and the different terminology. It makes it, makes it way more sense, and it's just easier. It just clicks more when you're out there. Chris, last you had two veteran running backs to lean on a little bit. What do you think of just the, the battle in the backfield now to replace Chad and Gunner? Um, last year, obviously, um, Nate, he got a couple carries. He did well for us. But um, I know what he can bring to the table. I'm excited what, what the younger cats can bring to the table when, they, when it's full pads and when it's live and on the spring ball. And all that. Receivers, pretty much everybody back. So uh, how do you see that group playing out here this spring? I feel great to have actually a full year with them to obviously develop their chemistry. And I'm, I'm excited for, for Mitch and, and Justin to get back to where they were, honestly. And how about the offensive line? That must give you a little bit of uh, confidence having four starters back up front. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they did a great job for our running backs. You know, our running backs last year, and they, they opened up the holes for me as well, and they gave me plenty enough time to throw the ball last year. And I'm sure they'll do the same this year. How difficult was the last year for you at times uh, with respect to some of the, the concepts of the garbage? And, and, uh, yeah, turning that into a much easier process this year. Uh, well, last year, I know, kind of being thrown into the mix is like, okay, well, well, what's going on? But obviously, over time, you know, you got used to it. But like I said earlier, with, it, with this terminology and the things that we change this year, it just, it just takes way easier in the field and it makes more sense. A couple more questions. How about or? from the leadership standpoint, you said you got to work on the past game this spring. Is, is leadership something you need to maybe make a conscious effort to? Yeah, definitely. I mean, last year we had like JP, we had Chad, you know. So I was kind of like trying to be in that, in that role, but I knew it was still their team, you know. Mm -hmm. And kind of, and, and this year since I'm, I'm being the full, the full quarterback, you know, it's my job to be the leader, not only on offense, but as well as the team.
Coach, Coach, I'm sorry. If you hold this, could you keep it like just down? I'm gonna get in everybody's way out. I'm worried if I keep leaning. Free advertising. Keep it like right, maybe by your pen. Free advertising. <laughs> That's where it's perfect. Thank you. How'd it feel to be back out here and uh, to be kind of wandering around? No Good. position group to Good. lead. It was like uh, like game day. I don't think I slept at all last night. And, uh, was up at five. And, yeah. So no, it was fun. Fun, uh, you know, it's always fun. The kids got a lot of energy the first day, and they were running around pretty good. And we got a long, long way to go, but it was uh, it was fun to be out here doing some football stuff rather than watching push weight around. What's the main operative here for the next 15 practices? Get better, get better. Like I talked to him about the end of practice, this should be the baseline. This is uh, this is as bad as it should get, and uh, so we got to you know, we got to stack some good days on top of each other. We get 15 opportunities and. We need to go watch the film and evaluate ourselves and see what we need to improve on, which is, there's many things, and, and come out Friday and be a little, little bit better, a little bit better. What were the general impressions of the periods that we didn't get to see? Um, you know, I thought, I thought for the most part, guys understand what we were trying to accomplish uh, offensively for day one. I think, uh, you know, it's amazing what a difference here makes. I know I'm in a different spot. And of course, we got Josh, and, but. Uh, you know, we spent some time, just in the short time since, since Courtney left, making sure we were all on the same page. And I really felt like, from a coaching staff, that we all understand what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and and I, obviously that you know, bleeds down right into the kids, and I felt like they understood what we were trying to accomplish. Now, we need to do it better, we need to do it faster, we need to do it more physical. But, uh, you know, if everybody's on the same page, you're giving yourself a chance for sure. Have you seen cutting down the verbiage in the offense pay immediate dividends? Well, I don't know that we cut down the verbiage. We completely changed it. Um, and so, you know, I'm not sure if it's less verbiage, more verbiage. Probably actually it's more verbiage, but no numbers. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, I've never been a number guy. I was, uh, my wife's a math teacher, I guess she's a numbers lady. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a simple man. I'm, I'm a word guy. So I'm trying to make it simple for myself. And hopefully if it's simple for me, it's simple for them. Was there uh, any specific improvements that, that you noticed in Chris right away on day one? Oh, I think, uh, you know, just his command on the field was, was better. Now, we still got a long way to go, but, you know, we had him back using the snap count. We could all hear him. Um, that's, that's improvement. That's improvement. And, uh, you know, I, I've been really impressed this whole offseason with, with his football IQ. Uh, he, he's a pretty savvy guy. Again, he's got a ton of work to do and got a long way to go, but but I think uh, he's uh, he's a quick study and I think he's eager to improve. So I thought I thought in a lot of ways he, he was better, and in a lot of ways he's got a long way to go. Was he quiet with snap in the past? A little bit, uh, but that's in the past. <laughs> How much do you think just improving his confidence, improving his on the field demeanor, things like that, will help him just oh, in terms of leading the team? Tons, tons. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are if you you know feel confident. And, you know, number one, yourself. Number two, you know what you're doing and you know how to do it. I mean, obviously that, that leads to, to confidence in how you carry yourself. And so, you know, he's, uh, his body language I thought was better today. His, you know, verbal command of the offense and the line of scrimmage was better. And, and we'll continue to improve that. And Coach McGee has helped him improve that a ton. I know that's been a focus of his. And so uh, continue to harp on that and try to do a little better. What's the plan in terms of install? How much new stuff will you guys lay on the table early on? We're front loading it a lot. Um, so we're trying to get, you know, a, the lion's share of it in in the first five or six practices and then come back and, you know, do the same thing a different way, if that makes sense. Window dress at different formations, motion shifts, whatever. But, uh, you know, hopefully they understand the core scheme, our DNA stuff, what we want to do, and then find different ways to do the same thing over and over again so that so we can improve on it. Improve our fundamentals technique. It's hard to miss uh, Josh out here. The new yeah, a little bit hard to miss him. So, what, what were your impressions of the guy that uh, is in your old role? Oh, uh, we got better. I think we got better. Um, you know, the last guy hopefully didn't screw it up, and the new guy got better. So, kudos to Coach Chip. He's a smart guy. There's a lot of guys in that room that have experienced several coaches now. Yeah. So. What's that experience like? Or I guess what's that dynamic like? Do you feel that helps to have a lot of voices in, or there? Or how, how's that adjustment going to work for those guys? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, they've had yeah, from you to Eck to now, yeah. to Josh. Um, you know, I, I don't think that's ever easy. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that's ever what you would obviously want, right? And it's not what I would want. 
but uh, I think those guys have done a great job. Uh, you know, I can only speak for myself and since Josh has been there. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I think they're good guys in that room, number one, that, that want to get better and, and hold themselves accountable and to a high standard. And so, obviously, when you have a room full of guys like that, that uh, helps expedite the process, in, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, Josh is, is a great guy, number one. Obviously, he's a excellent football coach, but he's just a heck of a guy and fun to be around and brings a lot of energy and juice to practice. And so I think kids kind of respond to that and kind of gravitate towards that. Several of those offensive linemen are out, so do you think that's a good chance for the younger guys to get some reps and get some depth? Absolutely. I mean, I don't <laughs> – I could say that's great. It, <laughs> it is good in the long run. I mean, I think it's good in the long run. You know, it's painful for a minute uh, while they figure it out because that's, you know, some stuff happening fast and moving faster. And, than they're used to, but but in the long run, uh, you know, hopefully it will pay dividends down the road. <laughs> How'd it feel to be back out on this field? <laughs> feels great. It feels great. Bobcat Nation, man. It's nothing like it. Feels great to be back in Bozeman. Great to be coaching here, really. Been a mentor for young Chris, Tyler, Cam, and good old Machetters. It's been, yeah, it was great practice. It was good. Good energy, et cetera. I love what Coach Cho's doing here. Nice to finally see those guys out on the field and get some coaching in. Yes, yes, it is great. It's great to see the release and things like that live. Great to see Chris live. Great to see you know the rest of the guys live because you don't it's you can't really see them live. I guess in the off season you can't see that. You can't see them finish throws, etc. So I was able to see some of the tweaks that we need to make to our our fundamentals. So it'll, be, it'll be good. What did you see specifically with Chris? Maybe that in person that you didn't see on tape. Or... Well, I won't go into too much detail <laughs> okay. on that. Okay. Yeah, but there are some some tweaks that we need to make. But a lot of it I did see on film when we evaluated, as we came in, evaluated the entire season at the quarterback position. I did see it on film and it proved to be true live. So, some, so we'll do some drills and some things and talk about some, th talk about some things in, in, in meetings to correct it. The biggest thing you talked about seemed to be footwork. Is that, is that yes. the main area? There we go. There we go. You hit it right on. You hit it right on. Yes. And then, okay, footwork and, and then getting his third camera through the target, following through on his throws because a lot of times, you know, he does an angle. Sometimes he doesn't angle his back toe, so then it locks his hips out. Now he can get his arm or his third camera, which is in his right arm, all the way through the target. So in that – and if he does, and if we can get him to do that, then that will create more velocity on the ball, etc. because he's throwing with his lower body instead of his own. Yeah, is, when you started with a quarterback's footwork, is it kind of like maybe hitting the reset button on his motion a little bit, I guess, because his feet gets better? And I guess, Marty, is it, is it different? Yes, is it yes. The feet, the, yes. The, we always, we talk about baseball carriage eyes, okay? And base is number one. Because if his feet are good, if he angles his back toe, it's easier to follow through with the third camera. So yeah, that's what we're really focusing on right now. And last year he had a little bit of, he would fire his feet. As soon as he gets to the top of his drop, he would fire his feet instead of pushing up in the pocket and sliding his feet up so that you do have momentum going into the throw. So we're trying to correct some of that. He talked about some of the intangible aspects of playing quarterback and him being a little hesitant in that aspect as a true freshman. Do you feel like when he when he gains command in terms of cadence and leadership and stuff like that, that'll help him take a next step? Yes, that'll definitely help him take the next step. Truthfully, he did he did better than yeah, much better today than I'd heard that he was. So that was yeah, that was that was great to see. He did take charge, spoke up a little bit, a little better command. Than what I've heard he he has, so that's that that gives me confidence in moving forward that we can that we can we can continue to develop and work with that aspect of his game because I think the more comfortable he gets with the playbook and knowing what he's doing and he's making plays when you make plays then you have even more command over the guys around you so therefore that's where it's going to start and he did do it. 
much better job today than I thought he was going to do. Is that something that you think you can improve on? I mean, it, oh. it came so naturally to you. So do you feel, but do you feel like he has a chance to yes. become that true field general? Yes, I think in my time here, fortunately, I had some good coaches. And the more confidence I got on the field, the more I knew what I was doing, then I take command of the guys a little more. But when you don't know exactly what you're doing, not saying he didn't know what he was doing before, but when when you're exactly sure of you know your reads and and then you're making plays then you're like oh yeah now I can step up more because it's nothing worse than a guy trying to command and he doesn't even know his own job or isn't efficient and effective and excellent in his own craft so that's what it's going to be if he perfects his craft gets better and better then he'll he'll get after it he'll command those guys a little more you went through um, four offensive coordinators in five years. He, now he's on his second offensive coordinator. How do you help him through that transition when he is learning some new stuff, some new verbiage, things like that? Yeah, it's just trying to make it as, as simple as possible. That's the thing, and making it clear to his head so that he just knows, OK, I'm going hit or here on this play. If I see this, I'm going hit or here. That's all. Nothing else, OK? Here to here to run. Okay, point blank period, make it black and white. Because sometimes when when you make it gray, then he's like, well, coach said this, maybe this, maybe this. But then he's not, he's not clear and exact in his head. Therefore, he'll hold the ball, okay? Or you'll see his eyes go from left to right to left. And that means he doesn't know exactly what he's doing with the ball. So that's the biggest thing is him developing confidence in the offense and knowing exactly what he's doing each and every play. He mentioned last year how sometimes when he would panic, he would run, and he has such a great ability to run. Oh, yeah. How do you hone that in, though, and help him be patient, stay in the pocket, even when he is such an electric runner? Well, you sometimes you have to create those plays where he does get out on the edge and he does have a chance to run the ball. But just making it black and white where, okay, you're going here to here to run. If he does that, then you naturally create explosives off of scrambles and things like that. But the number one thing that Coach Armstrong talks about is, of course, we have to continue to change his launch point. We change his launch point, get him where he's really comfortable. Whatever he proves to be really good at, that's where we, that's where we're operating. And Coach, Coach has a great, I guess he has a great grasp of that, of understanding. Okay, he's good at this and this. He's, we are not as good at that, so we're going to leave that alone. So Armstrong is the man. When you say launch point, you mean release point? Point where the ball comes out of his hand? No. Launch point is where on the field he's throwing the ball from. Like, is it in the pocket? Is it seven yards deep? Is it over the guard? Is it over the tackle, et cetera? Is he rolling out on a, on a sprint out, et cetera? That's what launch point means. Change his motion. No, the motion, no. That's technique. That's just technique. Anything else? All right. We're good. Thanks, guys.